their uh, try line throughout the match, and um, they would have taken a wee bit of confidence out of that. Ponsonby were, you know, returned, rejected on many occasions, t attacking the line, but um, we come to the halftime break at 12 all. So here we go. Here we start. I think the real positive for Ponsonby, they were able to certainly make some yardage through the middle of the park and uh, certainly probably dominated that aspect of the game as we get back underway here. A high one down to the back and it's out on the full. So there's a horror start for you, straight out on the full and with the wind behind it there, it's not going to need much on it on a day like this and that one sails easily dead and we have a penalty on halfway. Yes, if you have just joined Make the line, us, fellas, the make the line. It's pretty bad out here at War Memorial and the wind is blowing from right to left on your screen and that certainly would have helped carry the ball along. As you can see there pushing back, has that made the 10? Probably not. It's gone out though. Yeah, certainly one of those days where you probably don't push your luck, kicking for touch into the wind. Yeah. Younger there taking the safe option. Shout out to one of the bull boys there retrieving the Stephen Footy out of the bush. Yeah, there's a few spectators out there in the bush too, just quietly. <laughs> so tap and go and we are back underway. The interchanges of both teams adding plenty in Take him back, the first Corey. half. Johnny Tucker for Ponsonby in particular. Excellent in his carries now. Nautai. Speaking of Tucker, here he comes. Tucker three, takes up. three to bring him down. Ten metres out from the line. Nautai plays at the line. Turns a second row back inside. Four, move now, guys. Come on. Ran straight into a barn door. Good ball from dummy half. Malati has been good as well, scored a try late in the first half now. Nautai dribbles a little kick in, it's taken a devil of a bounce. Colin Matangi says, I will take that and I will run over the line. He can't believe it, the big fella. Right place, right time, scoops it up. We'll see that on the replay. He'll be wanting to watch that a few times himself, I'm sure. Plenty of touches in that set, Aaron Nautai. And you can see here... He's been dangerous every time he's been down inside the their uh, 10, inside their 20. <laughs> Absolutely, and that, that could not have taken a better bounce there for big Colin Atangi. Bounced straight into the red basket, probably didn't even have to move the arms. And the cheeky grin as well says it all. We'll take that one. And Ponsonby have the lead for the second time in this match. They took the lead on the first set of the game before Rewa hit back with three straight tries. Tough kick in this uh, condition, kicking right exactly. into it. Yeah. And don't go away after this game. We're also live with the SAS Fox game oh, of the round, Fox the Memorial kick. game of the round, as we see a big clash go, kicking Gordon. off at 2.30 today. Yep. And what must those players be thinking sitting here Hold watching this, Troy? I think uh, a few of them, no doubt, dreading getting out into the there elements today. I think there'll on be compression gear on everywhere. Uh, if they're not wearing that, they'll be wearing wetsuits. <laughs> So the conversion to be attempted, it's going to be a difficult one with the way the wind is going right now and rain really firing straight into the face of the kicker as well. Steps in. There we go. No. And ball off the tee. So a bit of a false start there. Yeah. And I know um, even with you know other shows that we've seen and even live sports on TV, you know, when we talk about how bad the weather is, you really can't tell when you look at the screen at home or uh, you've got your mobile device. But trust me. If you've got nothing to do, come down here, bring a raincoat, here we go. stand here we go. on the sideline with us, and enjoy life no. footy action. It's away. And just right away. away. So the score remains Ponsonby 16, Genesis Construction, Manuel Marlins 12. This is where we are live streaming from 2.30 on in the big game today. And the SAS Fox Memorial will have the North Coast Tigers up against the Pakatura Seagulls. Restart. Yeah, and I dare say this one will be a shallow one after the kicker on the full last time. Falls about 20 metres out from the line. It's good by Pulianga. And the try scorer, Kolomatangi, straight back into it. Great carry forward well, there. Done. I think again that may have been Tucker. Hard to tell those big bodies apart when they get on the rampage. Oh, no, oh, no. Has Sioni Tucker. Zaharia now fighting for the play of the ball. 
Little dart out of dummy half by Tongatia. Ball has spilt loose. What's the call? It's going to be a knock on. And so Manurewa will get their first use of the ball in the second half. Here we go, here we go, here. Just on halfway. Stanley Tongatia disappointed with that one. With me, Andrew. Bring him back. Big packs, aren't they? Absolutely. And you look at you know, the starting props and then you bring on the interchange guys. There's just no letting up with these Wait for the out call, Thomas. Wait for the out call. In and out. In and out. Hold, bulk Hold over the park. Get in. Mahuika to the scrum. Sorry. They spin it out the back now. Done. Brings Mariota into the play. Take him back, Andrew. Take him back. That's okay. Good line speed there from the ponies. They've got up and met the move there. there. And they need it to as well. Big junior to Kinga. With a good carry forward. Please, sign up. Come in. Play. Dion Fanger offload gets the offload away as well. Done now. Tips a little kick in over the top. It's nicely weighted. Puyanga in sixes and sevens. Well, didn't know whether to clean that one up or not. Manuel appeared for a touch. He's nothing there. And on second check, actually, it looks like our referee may overturn it. Let's see if we can hear the audio there and get the calling from referee Davis. But it does look like it's going to be a Marlins ball at the end of all that. Well, a younger rule to have touched it on the late deed. So back to back sets coming up for the Marlins. Ponsonby get us back underway. Scrappy one, bouncing ball. Wisely trapped by Dunn. Who says, you have it, Big Junior. In you go. Takes one with him, still driving the legs. Perhaps the chance for an offload there, but no one hanging off the shoulder. Clay, straight into it. He's caught high initially before being taken down. Tucker involved. Nice little run, too. Banger to Ariaiti. Ariiti, big Khan, still going. Back in field, scrappy stuff there. It's eventually picked up by Dunn, who just surrenders. Fanga, Mahuika, dribbles a little kick in behind. There's no one back there for Ponsonby, but the kick is well and truly too long. And they've let themselves down with the finish of the set there, Rewa, because it was all looking pretty promising, but Ponsonby, good defence. I survived this one and it remains Ponsonby 16, Manurewa 12. Eight minutes gone in the second half here of this Crown Lift Trucks Shaman Cup Clash. The first of our double here today, which we're going to be bringing you over the next few weeks, involving the second division teams before we get into SAS and Fox Memorial Premiership double headers in the second part of the year. Get on three, all right. Get up. Take your move. Longani, Tucker, oh, and forward. Nice carry. Yes. Short side, they're going to go. Nice hands here. There's an option on out wide here. Tuisi steps back inside. Good defense. Don't work, Don't work him. Don't work him. Get your head out of there. Get out of there. Let him play it. Let him play it. Taliapa. To Pulianga, who steps. It's touched. Pull down here. Tackled without the leave ball, it, I think, it, in the it, end it, there, it, it, and it, all it. of a sudden, the boys want to have a quick chat. The chat seems to be over the, to the left there, not where the referee is. <laughs> They're chatting to the left. Right. The referee's going to have a conversation himself. And, Corey, as the weather's been falling, you know, especially over the last 20 to 30 to 40 minutes, um, sort of not really easing up. You can see the water starting to now uh, form on the ground, so it's getting quite um, patchy in parts. And uh, notice when that last kick went through and Marlins were down inside the ponies, 10, 20, ball just skidded across the top. You can see water forming now, so it's going to be quite a, quite a heavy ground as we wait for the SAS Fox Memorial game kicking off later on this afternoon. So Davis again giving them a good talking to there, a little shake of the hands there, and the boys are all good. So back to it we go. 
And it was Bring him back, bring him back, bring him back, Corey. Bring him back, Corey. Colin Matoni, who oh, pulled out. Standard, standard. For a quick yarn with our referee. Ponsonby ball back underway. We go, Tucker. Gonna go very close. Just short of the line now. Little dart out of dummy half. They're very close here. The penalty for inside the 10. Time is off. Markers were never square, so we've got time pause now as referee Davis pulls the boys over for another talk. That is your warning. The next one goes. Hi, Mum. Take the back of yourself, please. Hi, Mum. Wait for the tap, lad. Wait for the tap, Thomas. Give himself a wee bit more room. Tucker. Went close a few seconds ago. And numbered up on him well on this occasion. Tongatia. Spreads left. Not the tie. Brings Colin Matangi back on the inside. They're getting their numbers though. Ariwa. Good work from James Clay. He's been involved in a few tackles now. All of a sudden, Luke. Offload. Malati gets the offload out the back door. Great scramble defense. Manu Ariwa. Just short of the line again. Clay involved. Not a tie. Darts out. He was good. Finds he was Pulianga. good. Pulianga beats the first one. Looking for a mate. Can't oh. find one. Flicks it back inside. Good run. Tia Tia. Five metres out from the line here again. They can't break this rewa pack down. Colin Matangi says, I'll have a good go. Okay, dribbled in behind. That's clever. And I think we've got to try at the end of all that. We wait for confirmation from referee Davis, who points to the spot. It is indeed another four-pointer for Ponsonby. We take a look on the replay here. It comes off a good, strong carry forward from Colin Matangi. And then I think our try scorer in the end is Benjamin Tia Tia. See the little kick dribbled in behind there, and then from there finishes it off nicely. So they eventually get their reward there, Troy, but it had been a few sets camped up on the line again. That manual goal line defence, super impressive. Yeah, and they've uh, taken that try off the back of a little chip, little um, grubber kick through. And um, most of their tries have been off kicks in the second half. In fact, um, both of them have a link from memory. Do the little ball boy down there. What a day for it. Uh, shout out to the ball boys. Uh, I believe today both John Munners. Sons involved in the ball boy work, perhaps regretting their decision to volunteer. Uh, they'll be go. getting a big feed, I'm sure. <laughs> Dad will be Hold there, fellas. Out some, Hold there. some hard earned wages for them today as we wait for the conversion attempt. And again, kicking into the rain and the wind. There we go. A little go. bit closer to the uprights. Hold. Wait, fellas. Here we go. Ball coming. Kick is up. Strikes it, and the flags are up, which gives Ponsonby a 10-point lead. 52 minutes gone here in the second half of the Crown of Trucks Shaman Cup match. Tied at 12 apiece at the break, but it is Ponsonby who have started the second half. More positive of the two. We haven't done well off the, off the back of a couple of kicks, as we said earlier. But it was interesting, the body language down there. As the Marlins kick off, we're on the ground again. They weren't really in a huddle. They're sort of just standing there, come back, and, you know, a uh, bit of a grim face. So they'll need to get their energy up and obviously get a wee bit of communication at me. So let's see what they're like. Noah Carver with the first carry forward for the Ponies. Troy, I think there'll be a lot of people happy to see this Ponsonby club doing well again. Take it back, Jack. Uh, back Take it back, Jack. Real powerhouse of the Auckland League scene. Fell away a little bit in recent nah, years, but the they mark. produced some wonderful players, uh, back, particularly, I guess, through the uh, 70s and 80s. Absolutely. You know, the Roger Baileys of the world. Um, they had uh, Donny Mann, you know, the Man Cups coming up with the tying game. I'm going to go on and on and on about it. They were a very, very strong club. They the set the benchmark. And they not only fared here, but, you know, they tipped over a number of Australian teams as well and did very against, against, well, in 73 against Cronulla on Carlow Park. So they've, they've got a long heritage. They're one of the oldest clubs, in fact, the oldest club in New Zealand. So good to see them back and competing. So that one bounces all over the show and at the end of it, we're going to get a penalty. 
And it's going to be a penalty for the Marlins. So, all sort of bouncing around everywhere. A lot of encouragement being shouted from the line there, Corey. It's the boys' kick for touch. Rough 50. Bites off some good yardage on back, that Andrew. one, so Take they need back, a reply Andrew, the to the Marlins, the and they probably need one fairly quickly, or Pontenby are going to start to really wrestle control in this contest. Wilson Connell now gets back okay, into it. Yes, as the game grinds on, the clock becomes an enemy as well, but they've got enough time on their side at the moment to mount a bit of pressure. Up to White. And they'll be wanting to complete their sets. Mahuika plays short to Puna, the captain. To Kinga. Ten metres off the line now, the Marlins. What can they conjure up here? They go out the back door to Henry Dunn. Now he's got his half screaming it on the inside. Tricky one at the back, and it's been dropped there, I believe, by Andrew Tuisi. Yeah, a lot of table water up in that um, part of the field, Corey. And um, it'll be interesting to see how the ground will wear on. Get him on the, the line, Andrew. On. So back-to-back -back sets coming up here for the Marlins. Pressure really now on Ponsonby. On the line, boys. <laughs> A confusion there in terms of the scrum formation, I think, for Ponsonby. Corey, get that guy on your side. Well off. Eventually it's picked down, and Rila get back into it now. Mariotta takes the ball to the line. Mariotta, he might go all the way here. Mariotta, Mariotta. Right, Going to go short, very, short, very short. close. Double movement. Perhaps nothing forthcoming now. Short, Paul has spilt loose, and it's going to be a knock on Ponsonby. That is great defense after it looked like Mariotta Mariotta was going to go all the way. They forced a mistake there, but as you mentioned, Troy, two tackles into the set, and it's really not what the Marlins needed there. Now the coach will be having a On the line, attack. Corey, bring him to the line, mate. Get him on the line, brother. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Another conversation around the setting of the scrum. We're well, just waiting for players to <laughs> jump in. in area, <laughs> wait for the ankle, fellas. Wait for the ankle. So Kuyanga feeds the scrum now. Back into their work here. Good to see Daniel Bell, one of the trainers involved today, of course. Uh, starred for Point Chevalier over the years. And the Fox running the water today. Balls out again. Built loose. I'm not too sure who that's going to go against there. We'll have to wait to see who feeds that scrum because it uh, looks like there's potentially a couple of knock-ons in the mix there, Troy. Andrew, yeah, Andrew, bring them back, bring them back. Bring these guys back. You see there on set, Necrom Ariiti. Come on, boys. Talking to his troops, vastly experienced, spent a lot of time over at South Sydney where he played NRL. Played in the Junior Warriors as well in the Holden Cup. Also Cook Island rep internationally, so vastly experienced is Big Nick Sloppy ball out the back, that's knock gone on, to no on, one. On on me, and there's going to be a knock on the end of it, and they don't deserve the, the ball if they're going to play like that, Rewa. That was really poor from them there. The ball was really around no one. Junior Tuking was the only one anywhere near it. And as far as he was concerned, he looked like he was running the decoy run, so Save a real breakdown there. The but somehow we're going to get a real ball at the end of all that, so... Perhaps a little pont and be handed there, perhaps that explains why the pass was so straight. Now, they get punished. Really not the outcome that you want to have as you, you know, getting ready to mount some pressure down on the opposition's uh, 20. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And um, at yeah. half time, I heard the uh, Manurewa Marlins captain talking about, you know, they they defended really well. They were doing all the right stuff on that side of the Take ledger. The ref, Corey. However, he wanted more out of the forwards to, you know, be able to complete their sets and um, to bend the ponies' line. 
So just short of the hour mark here at Birkenhead War Memorial. There's the ponies sitting on 10 point lead. The reshuffle going on is constantly back as well. Looks like we've got the back rower, Michael Talia Park. Just trying to get up into the centre. a mistake in the meantime. In there. Quite jovial, weren't they? After the scrum, Pollock. all the way off. We now get another opportunity and hopefully now Marlins get to complete a set of six. On the line, Andrew. A bit of the air gone out of this one now. Perhaps the conditions finally to start to take the their toll. Yeah, both teams have been asked to do a lot of defence on their own goal line as well, so potentially that's playing a role. Yeah, although, you know, there's a little bit of time left. The wind is on the Marlins' back and hopefully they can turn that into an opportunity as they start again to mount an attack. Mariota. Five off. short of halfway. <laughs> Centre's getting involved. Simmons, Simmons, that's a good carry. Still going as Nathan Simmons. Excellent work there by the number three. All the way back, Andrew. All the way back. They want the quick play of the ball. They want to play our tempo here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Jumps into Dunny Hart. Looking Hold left and right. Ten, They're going to go down ten, the short side. Ten. Done. And Mariotta there. Passes a little on the low side. And there's going to be a penalty at the end of all that. So we were going to keep the ball. Inside the tennis, the call. And it's quite deceiving over there. There is a lot of table water starting to gather on that part of the field where they're at. And the ref and the captain having another chat. He said, thanks very much. I'll go and get in the defense line. So Ali Fail, oh, boy, boy. 10 metres out from the line here. We were looking for a result. Ali A little bit of footwork at the line from Big Neck. Oh, Kolomatangi in to finish it over the top. Adama. Shuffle short side, done. Out the back door, Rafiti. Rafiti on to Wilson Connell. And the ball spills loose. I think he was going into touch anyway. So they're chancing their arm, Ariwa, but no results so far. A frustrating start to the second half for the Southsiders. Wait for the actual, fellas. Wait for the actual. Get him now, let's go. Get him now, guys. So Scrum picks down. Aaron McIntyre feeds. Complete the set will be the call to action for Ponsonby. Get out of trouble. Let's start playing footy down the right end of the field. Protect this lead we've got. Connor involved in the tackle and over the top. This Mangarewa club, so accustomed to success, would have really hurt them missing out on the playoffs last year. They'll be eager to return. Still harbour a strong desire to be part of the first division. A Get number of years fun. now Get since we were, were part of the Fox. If your memory says me right, 2005. Colin spins it into the centre of the field to Nutai. Puts a kick up. This will be a tough one at the back. Nicely fielded though by Rafiti. Who thinks about passing to his winger and instead decides to go himself. Feel the experienced campaigner is the fullback today. Spent some time with Logan Brothers as well as Mackay Cutters in North Queensland. And, and at another, the end of all another that, silly mistake. Yeah, they're just shooting themselves in the foot right now, aren't they? Yeah. This will be one that I think the uh, coach will certainly dissect at training on Tuesday after they've done 400 440s. <laughs> So Ponsonby, unsurprisingly, in no rush now, just taking their time. Goyanga kicks for touch. And they're going to start this set 10 metres off the line. Rewa can ill afford to concede line, here as the game hangs neatly in the balance. At 10 points, it's easily doable with about 17 minutes left on the clock. 
Tucker, Tucker, he's going to be very hard to stop from here. That's great down low tackle, though, by Henry Dunn, who has been targeted in defence but has stood up big time today. Not a tie. Bit of traffic there, sort of. Well, that's a good strong carry. Is indeed Andrew Bob back on the field. He was fantastic in the opening 20 minutes. Not the tie now. Shuffles play on. Pulianga holds it up, turns back infield. Connor with a good tackle down low. And we're going to get a penalty at the end of that. Boy, they are putting themselves under some pressure here, the Marlins. A bit of discussion there about whether or not to go for the two, Troy. I think the sideline's suggesting we're going to go for the two here. The players had other ideas, but they are going to look to the post, which is not a bad option. Stretch that out to ensure that even if we were score two it's tries, penalty, it's a penalty, it's not a conversion. Very yeah, worst, yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. a draw. Yeah. I think too, it may give their uh, big boys a wee bit of a breather. Luke Maati it was who uh, wanted to play on. You could hear him quite clearly saying, "We've got them on the ropes." Yep. Let's keep going. And it's getting awfully dark out there Corey don't leave us and thank you for joining us on the ARL TV live stream brought to you today on AucklandLeague.co.nz at the end of the match we'll be swimming out there to go and get the captains for Corey to interview and we'll get an update I can't wait to get out there in the rain <laughs> oh, yeah. already excited Puyanga to attempt the conversion from in front 15 to go in this one should be fairly straightforward. Indeed, it is right over the black dot. And they extend their lead to 12 points. So, plenty of time left on the clock. Plenty to go in this game. And Rewa, we know they can score points in quick succession. They did it in the first half. Three tries unanswered. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the mindset now as they come back, getting ready to kick off. It's going to take a lot of discipline. Trying to G up a bit of motivation. And, um, in the background, the North Coast Tigers have arrived. They're on site now, along with the Papakura Seagulls. They're all here with the liniment. So, high one fielded nicely by Pulianga, who just holds it up, hands it off then to Andrew Bob. One, stand up now! George Pulu back on the field as well. Been good the front row today for the Ponsonby Ponies. Mine's been there though by Manurewa. Up in the face. Mawati thinks about the offload. Take him back, Corey. Decides better of it. Tongatia. Back into Andrew Bob who takes him up over halfway. So good yardage being made by this Ponsonby team who really have dominated the middle battle for the majority of this one. Pulianga, pressure on last tackle, I think it is. Flicks the ball out the back. And in the end, it's going to remain in the field of play. Picked up by Andrew Tuisi Rafiti with a difficult one at the back. He spilt it, plenty of surface water down there now. I think at the end of it all, he has recovered it. So good work in the end there by Rafiti, but Troy, you've been highlighting the surface water which is starting to appear, and that's going to be a bit of a problem, particularly in the second game, I think, down there as the fullbacks try and field those kicks. Absolutely, and I think um, it would be fair to say that may play into North Coates hands, you know, being the home ground, they'll know where the, where the issues will lie on this field. So Rewa kick for touch, getting the penalty at the end of that one, a bit of a get out of jail for them. Get behind him. Get behind Simmons him. to tap. Good to go. And they need their big boys to fire up here. Simmons is going to take the first one. Settles him in. They're looking for another big one. Bookends. Adama. Mariotta. <laughs> They're there in numbers. Don't work him. He's got it. He's got it. Another penalty there. So Ponsonby perhaps just trying to slow things down as much as they can. They know the clock is on their side now. Come back, boys. Come back. Tap and go is the call from Mariotta, who has spotted a little gap there. Runs nicely before eventually being taken down. 
I don't know. Holds it up nicely. Puna, the captain. He's put it down there. Scooped up by George Pulu. But that's easy, fellas. Easy. For Rewa. Easy, fellas. And there's no one there. <laughs> He's going to call it back. So uh, I thought for a minute there that that was going to be a little bit of an issue there. We're playing the ball to no one. But referee Davis calls it back. I think no advantage taken after the knock on. So they have certainly been guilty of some fundamental errors in this second half, haven't they, Troy? Some uh, poor discipline with the penalties, but also some drop ball in good ball situations. Absolutely, really yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there, I agree with you. Um, a lot of it's been opportunity just One there, move. Take back now, Corey. Take back. wasted. And I'm sure they'll be talking about that next week at training. Get going up now! That's it, there's still time. Absolutely, and... Uh, and their, def their defence has been a highlight. Big contact there. Three guys. Joining in was Alia Fell, 21-year-old Manurewa Jr. Spent some time with the Otara Scorpions and Paul Swidder. Paul spills loose, so the stop-start nature continues. And now look at the Marlins now trying to fire each other up. They know we're here, we're here, we're here. they are well and truly in this one if they can get over that line. Yeah, a couple of yeah, trainers Andrew, have told Andrew. them how much time's left on the clock, so they'll definitely be um, getting that message loud and clear. Wait for the out, call, fellas. Okay, Tony's chat, however, is um, G'd up as well. Impressed with their halfback today. He's um, played pretty well given the conditions. Absolutely. We were now Wilson Connell. One man stand. Scored the first half double. Yeah. Nice and safe defensively as well. Mariota. Oh! Let him up! Let him up. Let him up. Let him up. Taken low on an aggressive tackle there. Done. Goes to the line, dribbles the kick in behind. It's bounced off, not tight. I don't think it was played at. So six again is the call by the look of it. They're not happy about it. The ponies done. They're going to work the short side now. Have to be patient here, Dariwa. Rafiti hands it back inside here. Bye. Taken high in the tackle by Pulu. Done. Hands off to Ali Fail. They Bust really need to complete. Looks like we're penalty at the end of that one as well. So yet another use of the ball. A full set of six coming up for the Marlins. Back into it they go. Mariota. Mariota. Still going, oh, oh, very oh, close there, oh, three oh, metres oh, out from the line. Simmons is the dummy half. Does he think about the burrow over? Mm. Indeed he does. And time off is the call, so referee Davis is going to call him back there, the team, so play the ball here. again. Back here. Some passionate supporters yeah. outside here on the right. Time back on, Simmons. They spin the ball back towards the middle of the park now. Aria Iti plays at the line. Dunn goes back door. Rafiti, they've got numbers here. Dariwa. Wilson Connell holds it up. Nice play out the back door. They're going to go very close here, are the Marlins. Dion Fanga. Take him back, Andrew. Get him back. Play the ball is the call. Back towards the middle. Throwing everything they've got at them here. We've got a man down and back play. Dion Fanga's in some strife. Play the ball, eh? Didn't like it. No foot on the ball. And pinged again. It's going to be a Ponsomi penalty at the end of all that, by the look of it. But some concern being shown for Dion Fanga. trainer's going out now. Looks like he may have picked up a shoulder or a wrist injury there, Troy. So, time off for the time being. We will pause in this one. We'll see in there as well, George Puyanga showing a bit of concern. Sorry, bud. A little bit hard to, to tell just in that top right hand corner. Every single sideline marker is down. It's been down <laughs> since we've kicked off. So we might end up with a bit of a pause here because I think the medical team may have to spend a little bit of time here. He's going to attempt to get to his feet, Dion Fanga. And 
for his knee is not good. We're I hearing heard. in the background, dear Andrew yeah. Tuisi. On here, on here, Corey. Chains on. Yeah. Have picked up a knee injury as well. So that's going to be the end of Fanga's day, you would think. And just looking at the way they're carrying off, Troy, perhaps it's actually a lower limb injury rather than the uh, shoulder or wrist, which it initially appeared. So late just, drama here. Just going on what the trainer said as he ran through. So injuries, it looks like, on both sides of the field. Andrew Tuisi for Ponsonby and Fanga for Rewa. So He's just making those readjustments holding, now. Hold, hold so their subs on. They've taken him off on the far side. And they'll look to walk him around the dead ball. One there, move! Hold, hold. Yeah. So back into it we go. About seven minutes remaining here Stay at up. Birkenhead War Memorial. The first of our double headers today. Do stick around post match. We'll hear from the captains of both the Ponsonby Ponies and Mangareo Marlins before we get into the big one. Round four of the SAS Fox Memorial Premiership. The North Coast Tigers taking on the Papakura Sea Eagles. Time pause once again as we see a bit of. Claret by the look of it coming from the nose of Alan Zaharia. Ponsonby aren't no, happy no, no. about He's something, perhaps yeah, feel no, that he no, may no, have no, got no, no, caught no. a little high there. No. So as we look ahead to kick off in the second game and the field, Troy actually holding up pretty well considering, so that shouldn't have too much of a bearing in terms of uh, muddy areas but plenty of surface water now falling yeah that right hand top edge uh, right hand top corner down on the pony's half it certainly gathered a wee bit of water and then down here on our side to our right uh, marlins inside their 1020 had a wee bit of surface water there too and look it'll only compound as the day wears on we understand there's a wee bit more inclement weather to come through as the game restarts and ponies get ready to settle straight into the so you would think some smart game management here pretty well kills the game off for Ponsonby. The defence has been excellent in the second half. Propelled a number of raids now as Nuatai gets to a long kick. And that's exactly what the doctor order is going to go very close to being a 40-20 there actually. Just short of the line, but that's clever play there from the number seven for Ponsonby, who has been arguably their best on field today. Along with some of his props, who have played a really good platform for him, Andrew Bob yeah. and George Pulu early on, trying yeah, Andrew, to Sione Tucker Andrew, off the bench. Andrew, really keep that momentum going. Andrew! Yeah, they did well, especially in the first half. You know, they've been repelled, as you said, a number of times. Um, a lot of their tries or efforts came off the back of nice little kicks and um, put pressure on. And, you know, the, the numbers are on the scoreboard, as we see right now. So Rewa come out towards this left edge here. Get out of there! Still time if they're good enough for Marlins. Simmons is kept busy today. Gone looking for work. Looked pretty good when he's carried as well. Just short of halfway now is Simmons. Back towards the middle of the park they come. Aria E.T. Crony's looking for double time on the defense. Spin it up the back, done. Next little kick in over the top. He's going to make the run for it here. It's a decent little kick. He's going to make Ponsonby work it out from their 10. The clock is now their enemy. The clock is well and truly their enemy now. Big thank you to North Coast Tigers hosting us today at the Tropical War Memorial Park. We did uh, have a quick chat to uh, North Coast Chairwoman Bobby Rudolph pre-game, who you're going to hear from uh, in a few minutes' time, so we're going to do an interview with her, but we did remark to her that uh, I don't think you and I have actually covered a game in uh, sunny conditions here at Birkenhead War Memorial Trail. No, and today's no different. That said, there's a lot of passion down here, and I know she's got a good, strong group around here, good volunteers, and as I said, big thank you to Mike setting up today. He's done a couple of fields, so, um, you know, proud of them and uh, a lot of passion inside the club. Absolutely. That's one of the really cool things we see at clubs all across Auckland is the effort our volunteers make. We have the best volunteers in sport. I have no doubt about that. And to see them in action every Saturday and Sunday is something special now as we see a sloppy ball out the back. Scooped up. 
By Tia Tia. About four minutes remaining here at Birkenhead War Memorial. Oh, no! More up. waiting for the quick play of the ball. A big thank you to CTAS, our live stream partners, who are standing up there in the elements, the wind and the rain, bringing you the live feed here today, courtesy of the AucklandLeague.co.nz. Tomatia now darts out a dummy half, catches the mark, is not quite square. That's a nifty little run there. The offload, however, not quite so good. Scooped up by Elijah Aliafoe. So it's now or never time for Rewa. They need a try, and it probably needs to be on this use of the ball. Is there any chance of a late comeback here? Just on halfway now. Going to come back to the middle. Wilson Connell. Good line speed from the ponies now. Absolutely got nowhere, Rewa. Really struggling to make yardage through the middle of the park now. The outside backs are coming looking for work. There's the two wingers. Wilson Connell and Hebden, both the try scorers from the first half. 35 out from the line. Dunn. Dunn goes to the line, dribbles the kick in behind. The chase is pretty good from Rewa Simmons there. And it's nicely cleaned up there by Benjamin Teotia, who takes no risks and hits that one dead. In the background there, you can see Papa Kuda going through Let's go now. You're taking your time. Let's go. Way over on the far side, the North Coast Tigers are warming up as well. Stay behind. They're building a fire, Corey, over in the corner there, <laughs> getting the coal out and turning the heaters on. And if they're not careful, I may well join them. As we prepare to head across field for our post-match captain interviews, there's a spirited carry forward by Elliot Fell. Spent some time with Hoovy Bay over in Queensland. Done. Half to half. Mahuita. So it is not for a want or a lack of trying. This Manurewa team have not been able to get over the line in the second half. Done. They short to Patuai at Andrew. the line. <coughs> Going to get a penalty on the end of that. So another use of the ball coming up here for Manurewa, but Ponsonby's defence. We were quick to credit Manuela were in the first half, Troy, but Ponsonby in the second half, they have just kept showing up. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the energy's come off the back of, you know, them being 24 points to 12, and, um, you know, they're in quite a positive mental attitude. And, um, here they come again. And they'll be happy with that, I'd say. Uh, 50 there, puts the ball down, and that sort of sums up the day for the Marlins, Ponsonby. Pick it up and we'll work this one out now. And ladies and gentlemen, don't leave us after the final whistle. Corey's going to be interviewing the captains and at the completion of this live stream, there'll be a hot button for the Crown Lift Trucks Shaman Cup viewers to be able to click through and to catch up on the SAS Fox Memorial Game of the Round. We are boys. Right, double Andrew, footy treat Andrew. today, the first of our double hitters. So with this presumed victory, the Ponsonby Ponies will pick up their first one of the year after being two-point losers last week at the hands of the Otara Scorpions. Well, for Manurewa, it looks like a winless opening fortnight for the South Auckland powerhouse. Wilson Connell picks it up. He can hold his head high today, the winger. Hold there, hold there, hold there. Okay, go. Back towards the middle of the park, they come. Siren goes in the background, and that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Ponsonby Ponies 24, Genesis Construction, Manurewa Marlins 12. That concludes our first game from the doubleheader here at Birkenhead War Memorial Park. In just a few minutes' time, we are going to be bringing you interviews with the respective captains of the Ponsonby Ponies and Manurewa Marlins before we build into the big one. Kick off between the North City Reinforcement, North Coat Tigers, and the Papakura Sea Eagles. But what a game it was to open the day. A brutal middle battle played in torrid conditions. Thank you, boys. And after being tied at halftime, it was Ponsonby who came up with 12 points in the second half and managed to 
get the upper hand. We're now going to take a very short break, ladies and gentlemen, before we join the captains for post-match analysis. Get in there. How you doing, sir? I'll just play fire and then I'll come back. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, what? Here, there. Are you both alright? Rain in the face there. Help. So that was fresh as we uh, have our cameraman coming back in, inside. So we're doing it all here. And uh, thanks, Corey, for getting out there in the uh, elements. As we're now just going to show you a wee bit of the park.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just as we're dealing with the weather here, Corey's coming back in. Um, there's a little bit going on in the background. We have a player from Manurewa who is going to need ambulance attention, and um, we're just shifting a number of cars around. As you know, this is grassroots football, and with the ARL live stream team, not only do we set up fields and film stuff, and um, carry gear in. We also do a lot of other jobs in the background. So as there's a little bit of concern now and uh, we get some first aid medical attention to the gentleman that is down, both teams are warming up in the background. Corey's just managed to come back into the uh, studio with me now. And um, 